Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today I'm going to be discussing how the loft on a driver influences distance and accuracy. Keep in mind this is going to be completely different for a lot of golfers as a lot of golf golfers deliver the club differently as they have different golf swings. A lot of that comes down to their attack angle. In driver fittings, a lot of times, if someone comes in for a fitting and needs loft on the driver, typically their attack angle is going to be down with the driver. As a little guy, my attack angle is quite far up. It's about five degrees on the positive side. And for that reason, I need to have less loft on the driver. Otherwise, the ball will launch very, very high and spin a lot. Keep in mind, it's, imp it's gonna be different for every single player. But today what we're gonna do is we're gonna test my golf swing. I'm gonna hit several shots with a nine degree head, a 10 and a half degree head, and a 12 degree head. And we're gonna compare the differences. I mentioned distance is important, but so is accuracy. So it's gonna be interesting to see which driver is easy for me to hit straighter and which driver is gonna go further. Let's get after it and hit some golf shots. To start off, I have the Maverick 10 and a half degree driver. We're going to be hitting with all Maverick heads, 9, 10 and a half, and 12 degrees. And we're also going to be hitting with this exact same golf shaft, the Rogue 60X golf shaft. It's one of the stock offerings that came with the Callaway Maverick in 2020. I'm excited to take a look at some numbers, so that's just my shots. So I just hit the three different heads, nine degree head, 10 and a half degree head, and 12 degree head. 21 shots in a row. Let's take a look at the averages up here on the screen. So my club speed today was hovering from around about 110 to 111 miles an hour. With the 10 and a half and 12 degree driver, my club speed was right at 110.3 or 110.2. The nine degree driver I did the swing just a little bit faster. I was not intentionally trying to swing the nine degree driver a little faster. It just was harder for me to slow that one down. It's kind of interesting. I'm not saying that a driver that has less loft on it is going to make you swing faster or not. It's just kind of interesting the way that I swung the club. I needed to feel like I turned that club head through a little bit faster to get that club face to ro rotate over. And we would definitely take a look at that because there was definitely more of a bias to the right with the nine degree driver. But Important to note the smash factor that is going to give us a look at the efficiency between the three different heads. So we'll take a look at the smash factor number 1.49 with the 9 degree driver, 1.48 with the 10 and a half degree driver, and 1.46 with the 12 degree driver. So we can see that my efficiency number was the highest with the least amount of loft on the club. It's what I would expect. Usually, if you have less loft on a club, you can generate more ball speed. We can see here, if we look at the nine degree driver, I was generating 165.6 miles an hour ball speed, 163.5 with the 10 and a half, and 161.4 with the 12 degree driver. So more distance, more potential distance with more ball speed with the lower amount of loft. Now keep in mind, that is for sure swing dependent, because if you don't launch the ball high enough, with a nine degree driver, you're gonna sacrifice out on carry distance. And we'll get on, onto that piece here right now, actually. We'll talk about launch angle. So we can see with the nine degree driver, we had the lowest launch angle at 13.7 degrees, the 10 and a half degree driver, 15.1, and the 12 degree driver, 15.9. So more loft on the club, it's gonna cause the ball to launch higher. Spin rate was kind of interesting because I was would expect the exact same trend. We did see it mostly, we definitely saw with the 12 degree driver, the highest amount of spin, about 27.20 on average. 
but it's kind of interesting with the 9 degree driver and the 10 and a half degree driver how the spin rate was very very similar we're talking about 2300 to 2350 with those two there as well so want to touch on dispersion really quick just to kind of touch on why the 9 degree driver was spinning just a tad more than the 10 and a half degree driver and that's to do with the fact that the 9 degree driver was pushed over to the right a little bit more when the ball fades or slices it's going to spin more so if you're leaving that face angle a little bit more open the ball essentially is going to kind of cut across the club face and it's going to cause more backspin and that's why we noticed a little bit more spin with the nine degree versus the ten and a half now if i was able to get that club face to be the exact same at, at, at impact with the nine degree and the ten and a half degree driver you would see it just a little bit less spin you can kind of see how I left the face a little bit more open with the 9 degree driver, 2 degrees open, the 10 and a half degree driver was 1.6, and really interesting that the 12 degree driver, I was able to get that club face to be closed at impact, and we can see that on the dispersion screen. If we look at these yellow circles, you can see how I have that one outlier that's right of center, but all other six dots with the 12 degree driver were to the left. So a little bit more draw bias with more loft on a golf club. It's easy to get that club face to turn over and we're seeing that exactly right there. That face angle, negative 0.2 was the only head that I was able to get that club face to be closed uh, coming, coming through there as well. Um, we can see that also on the curve. The most amount of curve to the left was with the 12 degree driver. And I just want to take that one outlier out because that one for sure was a little bit out to the, to the right. Now if we were going to take that one away, you can see the curve now was averaging 46 feet to the left, 22 feet to the left with the 10 and a half. And we had a lot more fade bias going on with the 9 degree driver. We can see 33 feet to the right with the 9 degree driver. Um, so you know, coming back to what this video is all about, is come back to distance and accuracy. We can see that the most accurate driver, straightest on average, was the 10.5. So we can see the, the white circle on average was right in the middle. We can see that the 12 degree driver was a little bit more to the left. We can see that the 9 degree driver was a little bit more to the right. So the more loft on the club, the easier it is to get that golf ball to go a little bit to the left. The less loft on the club, the easier it is to go a little bit to the right. And you can see how the 10.5 was kind of in the, in the middle. It's kind of interesting how the dispersion pattern was the smallest with the 9 degree driver. And that's probably because I do use a 9 degree driver and just felt more comfortable with that particular setting there. But you can kind of see general trends if we're looking at accuracy comparing them all. And then if you talk about distance, total distance here, it's kind of interesting how the 9 degree and the 10.5 numbers were pretty similar. And that's kind of interesting to see how 288.3, 287.5, 310 308.9. So really what I'm saying is make sure you get fit for the right loft on your driver. That's the, that's the most important thing. But it's all swing dependent. You can see when I'm hitting these shots today that my attack angle was positive. And you'll see some videos of me showing you how to increase your attack angle and, and to generate more distance. And, that way you can get away with a driver with a little bit less loft on the club. But if you don't have the speed that I generate as well, you may also struggle to get the ball in the air and get that ball to carry a little bit further. So carry distance for sure is important. If we're able to keep that spin rate down and keep that launch angle up, that is a way that you're going to get that ball to go quite a bit further. And that's why you can see how the 10.5 degree driver just kind of stayed up there with the, with the 9 degree driver here today. So really interesting to see the general trends with the 9, 10 and a half and 12 degree driver, talking about accuracy, talking about distance. For me, it was much easier to turn over a club that had more loft on it, and it was a little bit harder to turn the club over with the least amount of loft. I really hope you enjoy this content. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>